pregame.com. Welcome back to pregame.tv. We're going to take a look at Washington at Milwaukee. I'm Marco D'Angelo, joined by Ken Thompson, Sports X Radio, and a mainstay at pregame.com. Excuse me. Uh, we're going to take a look at Sunday, Washington and Milwaukee. This Washington team, boy, you know, you keep waiting, saying, you know, they can't keep underachieving all year. You, you got to think that they're going to do it. They finally win three in a row, and then what do they do? They go to Detroit and just get slapped silly two games in a row, run into a hot Sanchez and Verlander, which – Justin Verland, you, know, you never know which one's coming this year. You know, there's there's like two of them this year. He's either really good or really bad. But uh, looking at this one, Milwaukee's going to send Kyle Loesch to the mound. And he's pitched well in his last three, Ken. But those starts came against Miami, San Diego, and the Cubs. Now, are you a guy that when you see somebody pitch, you know, three good games like that, do you just say, hey, he's in the groove, or do you take into account who he's pitching? Right, you got to take into account, especially after the Cubs, you know, dealt some players. Uh, you know, that's the whole thing is you want to make sure, uh, you know, if he's knocking off top-rated teams, top-hitting teams, then you're going to look at him a little closer and say, eh, maybe not going to go against this guy. Uh, Kyle Loesch, you know, is still pondering that uh, – he probably should have taken any deal he could have to stay in St. Louis. Uh, it's, it's tough to pitch for Milwaukee right now. I think there's still a cloud over that team with the Ryan Broad situation. Again, they're going to play out the schedule. Uh, they basically have a mulligan as far as the Ryan Braun situation, but they were already out of it. And uh, unfortunately, they're in the wrong division in baseball right now, both them and the Cubs. You know, when you're in there with Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, and St. Louis, you're up against it this year. Yeah, could you imagine if Houston was still in it, how bad, how bad what their record would be? Um, you know, Milwaukee, they did win three out of four. We're taping on Friday, so they're starting their new series. But they did take three out of four in Chicago. But they caught the Cubs at just the right time. You know, the Cubs were coming off, coming back home off that West Coast road trip, a road trip in which they finished it off sweeping San Francisco. I think they were ripe for a letdown, the Cubs were, and Milwaukee took advantage of it. I think now playing a team that basically right now, if they don't start winning some games here early in August, the, the season, you're going to officially call the season over for Washington. they got to get it in gear if they're going to try to catch Atlanta. Um, any closing thoughts from you before I give the magic words? I'll tell you what, Washington, to me, once I saw the way they were playing, and, and I thought Strasburg was overrated anyway. I know he, he pitches good games, but this year as I watched him, he seemed to almost every time have one bad inning. Mm -hmm. That'll cost you. And I've gone against him several times. And when you look at his record now, if you've gone against him all year because he's usually a favorite and, uh, and a big-time favorite, you've made some great money going against Strasburg all year. Looking back, do you think Washington made a major mistake holding him out last year at the end when they had their chance? No question. No question. I mean, you'd only get to that pinnacle so many opportunities. And I know the fans are looking at it. But they could have gone about it a different way. They could have maybe, uh, you know, slowed down or spread his starts out further to, you know, if they wanted to, you know, have him pitch every two weeks and see how he does if you're trying to preserve the arm. But you know you're going to the postseason last year. Yeah. This year, now you're up against it. You're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. All right, guys, let's make this one official. All right, I'm taking a look at Washington, and I think they're the better team up and down the field against this Milwaukee club. I know they've underachieved, but I like this kid on the mound. Taylor Jordan, he's pitched well for Washington in his starts. He's had given up three runs or less in four of his last five starts. The one start that he did give up more than three runs, it was just four runs, and it was a game against the Pittsburgh Pirates, a game that I watched. I had a play on Pittsburgh in that game, and I felt I was very lucky. Davey Johnson, I felt, left him in one batter too long. He was in the eighth inning. He looked clearly like he was gassed to me in the eighth inning and he left him out there to try to get that last out of the eighth and it backfired and he gave up two runs the bull or he gave up another hit for a run and then the bullpen came in and gave up a run as well so uh, that start was better than it looks on paper Milwaukee I think they'll struggle against the Milwaukee's not a great team we know the problems they've had with you know Ryan Braun and everything else as Ken said that you know, cloud that's been over this team for the last, it seems like, two years with that situation. Jordan's ERA in day games this year, 2.45. This is a Sunday afternoon game. Washington's the better team. They need it. I think they get it done. I like the young pitcher. We're going to go ahead, take him. Because we're on the road, we're going to get a uh, decent price on Sunday. Lay it with Washington. 
And that's my free pick. We're going to be back one more. We're going to preview Hall of Fame game. Football starts it's here, already. Baby. It's here. Let's fire up the football. Get the grill ready. I'm ready for it. All right. We'll be back next. Hall of Fame game, Dallas-Miami, here on pregame.tv.